Welcome back! Here we are in our Cal Linux machine and it is time we finally learn how to use that mysterious tool that is said to be the most important tool that we must master. Don't worry, terminal is not difficult to use. But before we get to open it and run a bunch of the commands, let us first define what terminal is. So what is it? Terminal is a program that allows us to interact with Linux operating system using different commands. We can create files, delete files, create directories, run programs, set different tasks to execute, and we can do many more things using it. It is important you get used to it, especially if you never used it before, because if you are coming from Windows or Mac OS, you probably are used to opening files or folders by clicking on different icons and navigating like that. For example, on Windows, we usually open files by double clicking on an icon and it will open that folder. And on Linux, we can actually do the same thing. So if I go right here, and for example, I want to open this home folder, I will double click on that folder and it will open the folder with all the files inside of it. But we don't want to be doing it like that. Let us see how we can do it using terminal. So let us close this first and we already know how to open terminal, right click on desktop and click open terminal here. First thing that we notice is the username that we have right here and the host name that we have right here. But we also notice this slash desktop. This means that our terminal process has opened inside of the desktop directory. Does it always open there? Nope, it only opened there because we told it to open there. Remember, we right clicked on desktop and clicked open terminal here. If we for example went to the home folder and right clicked here, open terminal, Hmm, it doesn't say slash home like it did in desktop. It just gives us this wavy minus sign. Well, that sign in Linux means that you are in your home directory of your user. And our user is called Mr. Hacker, so the directory name should be slash home slash Mr. Hacker. And to check the directory name, we can type the command pwd. If we press enter, it will give us the current directory in which our terminal process is running. And it is slash home slash Mr. Hacker. And this PWD simply just stands for print working directory. If we, for example, go to the folder once again, which is slash home folder slash Mr. Hacker, and we double click on documents, try to open terminal here. So open terminal here. This will open a second terminal and you will see right here that it says slash documents. But do we always need to go to that folder and open terminal inside of that folder for it to be inside of this directory? Of course not. We can use a command called cd. And you should be familiar with this command since we already used it before. Let us test it out. Let's go to the documents directory from our home directory. So I will just close this second terminal and right here we are inside of our home directory or slash home slash Mr. Hacker. We know that inside of this directory there is a documents directory since we managed to open it right here. And to navigate to this directory using terminal we can use the command cd and then the name of the directory which is documents. We press enter and here it is, we are in slash documents directory. If we type pwd here, it will tell us the current working directory is slash home slash Mr. Hacker slash documents. And for example, if we wanted to go one step or one directory back, we can type the command cd and then two dots. What this command will do is it will go one directory back and if I type pwd once again, we will now be 
again in slash home slash Mr. Hacker directory. So these two dots tell the terminal to go one directory back. Okay, great, but how can we know which subdirectories and files are in home directory, for example? We knew there was a documents directory in home folder because we opened it right here. We didn't open it over terminal, we opened it right here from our desktop. Once we open it again, we can see all the folders and files inside of this slash home slash Mr. Hacker directory. But we didn't see these files inside of our terminal. So how can we list them? How can we see all of these files using terminal? So we know which directories are available inside of this slash home slash Mr. Hacker directory. To check files and folders in any directory, we can use another familiar command, which is ls. And the ls command stands for list. So let's just test it out. If we type it, press enter, here we are. We can see same folders and same files that we can see inside of this window right here. So what we did for now is we used terminal instead of clicking on bunch of files, bunch of icons. We now are doing all of that with our terminal. Now that we know which folders are in this directory, we can choose which folder we want to go to and use cd command to go there. But let us go one directory back from the slash home slash Mr. Hacker. To do that, we already know we can type cd and then two dots. And by the way, cd simply stands for changing directory. Don't know if I mentioned that, but cd is changing directory. And now we can see once we went one directory back, we are in slash home directory. If we type ls here, we can see here is our Mr. Hacker directory that is containing these files right here. Since we went one step back, we can only see Mr. Hacker directory since this is the only folder inside of the slash home directory. Let's go one more step back. If I type cd two dots once again, now I'm in slash directory. And it is called slash directory because it is only specified as a forward slash. And we can't go more than that. This is the main directory that has all of the other files and directories in the system. If we try to type cd once again, you will see it will still be in the slash directory. And remember when I told you during Kali Linux installation that we will shortly see slash home slash tmp slash var directories that occurred in one of the installation questions? Well, if I type ls right here, here they are. These are all just standard Linux directories. And here is slash home from which we came from. Here is slash var. And here is tmp. And a bunch of other directories. And these are all just standard Linux directories. From here, you will notice that not all of it is same color. This is because not all of the stuff we see here is the same thing. Something is a directory, something is a file, and for example, we cannot use cd command onto a file. We can only use cd to go to another directory. So if I try for example cd, and I choose this file, so cd in it, rd.img, and press enter, this will not work. It will give us an error saying not a directory. But if we type cd and then at c, for example, which is this directory, and press enter, now I will be inside the at c directory. And here I can type ls to list all of the files inside of the at c directory. And you will also notice that here we got a mixture of files and directories as well. Directories are these dark blue names, while files can be other colors depending on file type. Usually, they are white. Okay, great. We learned the basics of navigating through Linux system and directories using different commands. Now, before we finish this video, here is a practice test. Try returning to the desktop directory 
from this at C directory using only the commands that we learned. I will give you right now a few seconds and I will show you how to do it. So try it out. Ok, don't worry if you didn't get it. This will come with practice, so here it is how we can do it. From the at C directory, we know that we must go back to the slash directory. And in the slash directory, we got our home directory. We can check it out by typing ls. And inside of this home directory, we know that we got the Mr. Hacker directory, and the Mr. Hacker directory has the desktop directory. So to navigate there, we can type cd home, type ls here, then type cd Mr. Hacker, type ls here once again to check out all of the available directories, and cd desktop. And now we are on our desktop directory once again. Great, so practice a little bit with these commands. This is nothing really too hard, it just takes some practice and you will get used to it pretty soon. And in the next video we're going to see how we can create files and folders using terminal, as well as we're going to see how we can run programs. See you there. Ok, so we know how to find our way to the desired directory in terminal, but what if we need to create a file or a subfolder in another directory? How can we do that? Well first, let's open up our terminal. And by the way, another way that you can open terminal instead of right clicking and going open terminal here, is going up here to this icon, which says terminal emulator and clicking on it. By default, this will be inside of your home directory, which we know to be this sign, and if we type the pwd command, we get slash home slash Mr. Hacker directory. We know that our desktop directory is also inside of this directory, so let's go there. CD desktop, press enter, and now we are in the desktop directory. Let's get back to the files. To create a simple empty file, we can use a command called touch. If I simply just type touch file, and let's call it file1, press enter, this will create a file named file1, and it will have no contents inside of it. We can also see that file1 has been created, as it is right now on our desktop, since we created it inside of the slash desktop directory, and if we also type ls, we can see that the file is in our desktop directory. To make sure this file is indeed empty, we can use the command cat, and this command once executed on a file, writes out all the contents that are inside of that file. Let's try it out. So we specify cat and then file1, press enter, and this will give no result since, as we already mentioned, the touch command creates empty files. If we want to, for example, put something inside of that file, we can use a command echo. You simply just type it like this, echo, and to put something, you specify after the echo, let's say today is a really good day. So we specified an entire sentence, and all we need to do to put this sentence inside of this file is to specify this arrow to the right. And after it, specify the name of the file that we want to put this sentence in. So echo, today is a really good day, into the file 1. Press enter. And if we cat it once again with the cat command, so cat file 1, we will see that now it outputs exactly what we've written to that file using the echo command. Ok, that's all good, but there is an easier way and more practical way to do all of this. We can use a text editor to write things inside of a file. And an easy text editor that we can run from terminal is called nano. So let's try to do the same thing we just did using nano. If we type nano, and after nano comes the name of the file that you want to edit, and since we want to edit a new file that we haven't created yet, we can simply just type name, let's call it file2, 
and press enter, this will open this empty window where we can type anything we want. We can type file content here and it can be anything. We can type for example text here, but we could also type code if we wanted to. Let's start with text first. Let's write just hello world as a text. To save this, we press Ctrl O together, then enter to save under this name and then Ctrl X to exit the nano editor. If we now type cat and then file 2, and by the way, we can notice that file 2 has been created along file 1 on our desktop. But if we cat file 2, we can see the output of hello world. So we managed to do it only using one tool, which is nano, instead of using two tools, which are touch and echo. But I also mentioned we can do the same thing with programs. For example, how can we create a Python program using nano and terminal? First we need to open a file. So let's type nano and then file3.py and in this case we add .py because that is an extension for Python programs. Then inside of it, after pressing enter, we're going to run a simple command, which is print and then hello world between the quotes. And you will see that some stuff changes colors. This is because the nano editor recognizes this as a Python program. What we did right here, in case you're not familiar with Python, is we just ran a simple function that will print out the string that is in between the quotes. So this will just print out hello world. Let's save it with Ctrl O, then press enter and then Ctrl X to exit. And luckily for us, Python is already installed in Cal Linux. So all we need to do to run this program is to type python3 and then the name of the file, file3.py press enter and the program will execute. Here it printed out hello world. Cool right? You will also notice that the icon is different than these two icons. This is also once again because this is recognized as a python program. It even has the python icon. Now that we know how to create files and execute python programs, the next question would be how can we create directories? To create a directory, we can use the command mkdir, which stands for make directory. To check it out, let us run mkdir and name a directory folder. So press enter, and if I type ls, we will see that we got our files as well as a directory, which is different color, and it is called folder. Remember, we differentiate them by color, and also, if we try to change directory to the folder, it will work. It will even give us the path of slash desktop slash folder. Great. In that folder, you can do pretty much anything you want. You can create subfolders or create files. Whatever you want to do, you can. To move, for example, our Python program from the desktop directory to our folder directory, we can use command MV, which stands for move. We must first navigate back to desktop directory, so let's do it using cd and then two dots to go one directory back. And from it, we run the command mv file3.py into the folder. So we specify move, then the second parameter is what we want to move, which in our case is file3.py, and the last parameter is where we want to move it. We want to move it inside of our folder. So press here enter. And you will notice that the file3.py disappeared from our desktop directory. We can also check that by typing ls and notice that our Python program is no longer here. But if we go to the folder directory and type ls here, we will see it here because we moved it. Here it is, file3.py. Now, this is a handy command and you will use it a lot. Besides moving the file, we also want to see how we can copy a file and we can do it using the cp command. This does the exact same thing as move command, but it doesn't move it from original directory to desired directory, it just copies it. 
So let's try to copy file3.py and call it file4.py. If I type cp, which stands for copy, file3.py, and I type file4.py right after it, this will create an exact copy of our file in the same directory. If I press enter and type ls, here it is. We got file3.py and file4.py. If we want to change whether they are exactly the same, we can cat the content of file3.py and cat the content of file4.py. And we can see they're both the same Python programs. And last command that we want to cover regarding files is the command rm. This command deletes files and directories. And let's say we try to delete file4.py, that is our copy of our Python program. We can do it by typing rm and then file4.py. Now, be careful with this command, since once you delete a file, there is no trash bin where you can retrieve it, it is gone. If I type enter and type ls, you will see our file4.py is no longer there. Okay, but how do we delete a directory? Let's first create a directory inside of our folder directory, and to do that, we type mkdir, and let's call it folder2. Folder2 is a subdirectory of our folder. If I type ls, here it is. And let's say we did create this directory by mistake, and we want to delete it. Can we use rm folder2? Well, we can try it. Hmm, cannot remove folder2, and it will tell us that it is a directory. So how do we delete it? Well, we'll remove it in the same way we remove files, we just add an option at the end of the command. So type rm folder2, and then at the end, add space and then dash r. Press enter, and this will delete our directory. Also, double check what you're deleting with this command, since if you go to our slash directory, which is directory containing all folders and files in system. And if we were to type, for example, in that directory rm, then this star sign, and then dash r, this command would delete entire Cal Linux machine with all of its files. So always pay attention, what exactly are you deleting in Linux, and from which directory are you deleting? Since inside of the Linux, you will not be stopped in deleting anything you want. You can easily delete a crucial file for the operating system and make your Cal Linux machine unworkable. That is also a reason why we are practicing with virtual machine. So let's... Oops, I actually ran this. And you will notice that the results of this command, if I type ls, now our folder is completely empty. So I actually ran this by mistake. And keep in mind, if I actually ran this from the slash directory, which is our root directory, I would delete entire Cal Linux system. For now on, it is good since I only deleted our Python program, so it is not a big deal. Okay, great. We learned a bunch of the commands in this lecture. Now I got a practice test for you that you can try to do for the next lecture. Inside of our folder directory, since I deleted my Python program, I want you to create the file 3.py once again. You can type anything you want inside of it. You can use the print hello world statement that we used. And what I want you to do using the commands you learned in this video, is to copy that file in the desktop directory from our folder directory. So you create it inside of this directory, and I want you to copy it back to the desktop directory. A hint is that it can be a little tricky once you copy file from some directory to directory. Anyways, just try it, and we're going to see the solution in the next video. Welcome back. Have you managed to figure out the command from previous video? Don't worry if you haven't, since it was a tricky one. Let us see what the solution is. So if I navigate to my folder, which we created in the previous video, we wanted to copy our file3.py, which is our Python program, from folder directory to the desktop directory. And if you tried to solve it but didn't manage to, you probably went with command cp file3.py desktop. And if I press enter, 
this command probably surprised you since it created another folder, or pardon me, another file, in the folder directory called desktop. This is because it read our command as if we wanted to copy our file into another file in the same directory, and we call that file desktop. And this is just how the command works. In order to successfully copy the file to desktop directory, we must run the command and specify the full path to the desktop as well as the name of the copy that we want. So it would look something like this. First, we're going to delete this desktop file since we don't need it. And then you specify cp file3.py and we specify the full path to the desktop which is slash home slash Mr. Hacker and then slash desktop. After it, we also want to specify slash and type here the name that we want our copy to have. So let's just call it our copy.py. We add the .py since it is a Python program. Press enter and you will see right away on the desktop we got our copy.py. Now that we got that figured out, let us talk about a few network commands that we will use a lot throughout this course. The most important command we already know is ifconfig. We use ifconfig command to get our IP address and what the output of this command is, is all the network interfaces as well as IP addresses corresponding to those interfaces. If I run ifconfig, oops, we get command not found, so we must run sudo ifconfig, press enter, then we enter our password, and here I have a few interfaces. So let me enlarge the terminal so we can see entire command. Let's just fully enlarge it and run the command once again. And by the way, you can navigate to the previous commands using upper and lower arrow. So I can navigate between all the commands that I ran previously. And here is sudo ifconfig. And this is the output of my ifconfig command. For you, this will probably be different. Here I have ETH0 interface, which is my cable connection. And it has an IP address of 192.168.1.12. And I can also see the loopback interface, which is this LO, which all of us should have, and it will be an IP address of 127.0.0.1, which is also a local host IP. For this course, we will usually be interested in this ETH0 IP address. If you have another interface called differently, that is also fine. You could have a different named interface if you, for example, are connecting over Wi-Fi. This IP address that we get, right here, is called local IP address, which means it only works inside of our network to communicate with other devices that are also inside of our network. There is also something called public IP address, which we are going to talk about later in the course. For now, just remember that ifconfig outputs local IP address as well as our network interfaces. Another thing we can get from ifconfig is our MAC address for a specific interface. So for the ETH0 interface, here is my MAC address. And what MAC address is, is a unique identifier for every device, unlike local IP addresses that could be the same in different networks. For example, it is a great possibility that you also have the IP address starting with 192.168.1. While the MAC address is unique for every device in the world. And in case you're new to all of this and don't have much previous experience with MAC addresses and IP addresses, you might be asking, why do we need both of them? Well, let me explain like this. MAC addresses are unique and usable in communications with your neighbor machines or simply with machines that are on your network, while IP addresses are used to communicate over internet and they can also change. Remember it like this. MAC address tells you who you are. IP address tells you where you are. So that is the ifconfig command. 
And now that I think of this ifconfig command, there is one more important command that I didn't show you and that you will use a lot, which is sudo. Remember, we used it with ifconfig. Now, sudo is not a part of the ifconfig command, it is just a command that we use once we want to execute something as a root user. And just to remind you, a root user is something like an administrator. It has highest privileges above all other users. With root user, you can execute any commands that you want. For example, once we ran this ifconfig command, it told us command doesn't exist. If I just type once again, ifconfig, it will say command not found. But after using sudo ifconfig, we managed to execute it. That is because ifconfig command must be ran with root privileges in order for it to execute. Throughout this course, we will encounter many programs and many commands that will require sudo in order to run. And sometimes there could be multiple commands at once that we must execute as a root user. There is one cool trick so you don't have to type sudo before every command is to run at the beginning sudo and then su. Press enter and if you're running sudo for the first time inside of one terminal session, it will ask you for your password and then it will log in into the root terminal. So everything you run from now on, you will run as a root account. Right now, I no longer need to specify sudo ifconfig, I can just specify ifconfig. And it will not tell me command not found, it will execute it since I am a root user. As it says right here, it is no longer Mr. Hacker, it is now root. If you want to exit out of this root terminal, you simply just type exit and it will go back to your Mr. Hacker terminal. Now, this can also be applied to files. Some files might be created only for root account to edit. For example, if we run the command sudo touch file1, we press enter. And if we, for example, type sudo nano file1, type here hello there, we control O to save and then control X to exit, we won't be able to edit this file as a normal user without the sudo command or without the root account. If I lower this terminal, here is our file one. And the reason why we can't edit it is because this actual file right now has been opened and edited with root privileges. And once we saved it, we saved it as a root. So right now, if I try to nano it, it will tell me file is unwritable, which means I cannot write anything. Well, I mean, I can, but if I try to save it, it will tell me right here, permission denied. So let's close this and open terminal once again. However, if we go as a root account, sudo nano file one, and we type our password, now we can type anything we want. Just one second, it seems that we opened the wrong file. This is the file one that we created from the previous video that says today's a really good day. And to go to the file one that root account created, I believe it is one directory back. Or let's just go to the sudo user, type enter, cd Mr. Hacker, cd desktop, cat file one. Never mind, since we can't really find it, let us just create another file. Just make sure you go to the root account of the terminal and then type nano test file and once you type nano test file here type hello there save this exit the root account and if i lower terminal right now we will see this test file right here on our desktop but it also has this lock right here this means we as a normal user cannot edit this file we first need to go to desktop directory, so let's go to the Mr. Hacker and then desktop. And we nano test file. It will tell us once again, file is unwritable. Only root account can edit it. And this is something you will encounter a lot, so it is really important next time you see either something like command not found or write protected file 
or this requires root privileges, just know that it needs to be ran with sudo. Alrighty, so with this we finished our small crash course for Linux and I would advise you to practice a little bit with the commands we learned and also explore Cal Linux operating system a little bit. Go to different directories, see what it all has, but be careful not to delete some important files. Ok, now we are ready to finally go into the process of penetration testing. Hopefully you are excited since this is where the fun starts. Let us see how to perform the first phase, which is information gathering. See you there.